Good evening, everyone. We are going to call the City of Deltona City Commission Workshop for Monday, November 8th, 2021 to order. May we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Vela Vasquez. Present. Commissioner King. Here. Commissioner McCool. Um, on Zoom. Here. Commissioner Ramos. Present. Commission Commissioner Sosa. Here. Vice Mayor Bradford. Here. And Mayor Hersberg. Here. May we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner King, would you like to lead us? Okay. Our one item of business this evening is the Deltona Water e billing presentation and discussion. Very exciting. Can't wait. Mr. Peters? Steve Danskin, our acting public works director, going to start this off. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having us tonight. What we're presenting to you tonight is uh, the culmination of about nine months' worth of effort that started with a, um, a need to improve our, our PCI compliance with our billing and morphed into enhanced customer service uh, aspects. Uh, e-billing um, and even went as far as a look at the whole takeover of, of the customer service and billing system. We have, I think, come to a very, um, uh, a, a, a place and a decision that, that will benefit the customers, Deltona Water as a whole, and our reputation and I think to start, I would like to introduce Will Geralds, our customer service and billing manager, who can better explain this than I. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. All right, so as Mr. Danskin mentioned, um, we're looking into improving, give me a second. to improve our PCI compliance. So. Can you just go a little closer to the mic for us? Thank is that you. Better? Yes. Okay. So we're looking to improve our PCI compliance. Um, we started this process of PCI compliance as our main focus, but as we spoke to different vendors, we discovered that they all had much to offer. Knowing something had to be done, a recommendation was made to separate credit card users from our network. With AMS handling our credit card transactions, this would eliminate any PCI liability. That would also save us roughly $20,000 in network hardware to segment all customer credit cards, or to segment all credit card users. Um, the city currently uses Tyler's Citizen Self-Service Payment Portal for utility payments. But by going with AMS, that would save us roughly $6,250 annually. And as you can see on the slide, I have the things I, I just mentioned. So one of the other processes to become PCI compliant was upgrading our IVR system or replacing our IVR system. And this would be a, a one-time saving with going to AMS. So with using AMS's IVR solution, that would make our IVR more customizable and easier to maintain. The city would also see an immediate saving of $50,000 by not having to upgrade our RVR system ourselves. Additionally, with AMS hosting the IVR, the city wouldn't have to budget for JavaScripts when upgrading our phone systems. So let's get a little bit to the customer benefits. By going on AMS, we would get features that we currently don't have with our current Tyler uh, Citizen Self-Service Portal. 
Um, customers would be able to create their own personalized user IDs and passwords on a more easy to use portal. Customers will have access to e-billing, which we currently don't have. They will have access to auto pay by credit card, which we currently don't have. They will have access to receive text notifications, which is something that we currently don't have. And they will also open up our various payment methods for using Visa, Discover, MasterCard, mobile wallet, and even e-checks if we decided to do so. So with going with AMS, we would open up more features for customers to use, which will make life a little bit easier for them instead of what we currently have in place. Here we have um, the budgeting breakdown of it. So I'm not gonna go line for line, but if you would review it, the bottom line net cost, as you see, if we go with AMS, we are saving quite a bit. But this is built around us going with e-billing. With the projected or the possible projections with us going with e-billing and customers receiving bills and us not having to send paper mail, if we can get 10%, 20%, 30 or 40%, you can see that those would be a, a large quantity of savings annually by going to this particular, to this particular method. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Dan from AMS, and he'll go a little bit more deeper into the details of what they have to offer as a, as a service, and go from there. Thank you. No. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Sloan. I'm the president of Automated Merchant Systems. We have been a, uh, merchant service provider in the Lake Mary area for going on 29 years. And I'm gonna give you an overview of what we think is the right solution, and then we're gonna actually demo it for you, okay? So just real quick, uh, as I indicated, I'm the president. I have David Muir on standby, who's gonna actually do the virtual presentation to you in just a few minutes. Nancy Murphy in the audience and Adam Brzezinski uh, are two representatives that work at our firm. One of the things I wanna make clear because you're seeing a lot of slides about AMS and now you're gonna see some words called core that what actually has transpired. So AMS has joined a organization in February of this year by the name of core. Uh, they're technically called Bo uh, core business technologies. We are actually a merger of four separate companies that have for th over 30 years serviced city and county governments. So we've come together and brought all of our various, uh, uh, let's say talents, expertise and technology all under one umbrella. Our approach is a simplified complex revenue process, which basically is best in class for service and support. Um, I'm not gonna go through every bullet item, but as you can see on the right hand side, we have 17, 1,600 customers nationwide in our combined organization, and we rank among the top 20 in merchant processors now in the United States. Oh, I apologize, I clicked too quick. What we're here to bring to, uh, our capabilities is in revenue management, clearly payment solutions, and we also have a full citizen engagement uh, platform, which we won't talk about tonight, but basically takes over and, and facilitates um, better quality of website content for cities and counties and puts you in the driver's seat of how to manage that on an ongoing basis. Um, and so basically we um, also have conversations going on currently with the folks, City of Deltona, uh, on a separate project when that, when that makes sense. We check all the check boxes, as they say. We are fully PCI compliant. This is a pretty little certificate of AMS's recent certificate. We are a registered TSP, which allows us to play in government for American Express. Um, we are fully EMV certified, doing point-to-point uh, -point encryption at the retail point of sale. We're a full ACH processor in our own right, so we can actually take your ACH transactions and settle them. Those would be the one-time things that are typically done on a website to make a one-time type payment. That's not bank drafting or anything like that, that's separate. Um, and we actually have a whole division that is in the healthcare. So we understand HIPAA and HIPAA compliance, while it doesn't apply typically in government, just to let you know we do also play in a very high security environment um, for medical, like. Um, Cleveland Clinic and some of the other clinics out there. 
This is kind of the customer experience that we're gonna take you through. We actually are in a phase two in design. We've been through the discovery stage. We've spent a lot of time, several meetings with your staff um, to come up with this solution and propose this um, solution for you. We will, once we uh, move forward, assuming we do so, then the, the last three bullets of management, implementation, and go live will be the steps that will involve. And I can answer any questions about those if you would like at a later date. One of the things that brings, that was a real value of bringing all these organizations together is that all of us in our own right have gone off and done many, many integrations. And integrations for those that aren't aware are where you basically take two diverse applications and make them connect and you update them in either real time batch or otherwise. So one of the nice things about the core organization now is we have over 400 integrations. And while you're focused on Tyler, we have many uh, cities and counties that we support five to 10, 15 back end integrations all through one uh, cashiering type solution. You're using Tyler cashiering in some of your environments um, and then in uh, Munis payments, so that would not be applicable here, but just to let you know, we do have that available also. This is our engagement platform uh, for both payments and citizen engagement. We are like everyone out there, we're omni-channel uh, based. So anytime, anywhere, anywhere you're connected is, is our mantra. Um, the difference between us and most other firms out there is there's now one, as I like to, our CEO's famous um, a slogan is, there's one throat to choke. What I mean by that is everything that we will deliver to you is directly our solutions. We don't outsource to anything else and we're here to directly support it when, when the need arise. I'm not gonna read every bullet here, but basically this is kind of the, uh, the busy slide where we list out everything that we think we can do and, and, and break it down into those important categories like vertical expertise, it means we've done an awful lot of this for many, many, many years. This is not our first rodeo. Okay, we know what we're doing here. Um, client success, uh, Nancy will be the city of Deltona Utilities um, account manager for anything and everything as we move forward, not just implementation, but ongoing adding of accounts, changing of accounts, things like that that happen on an ongoing basis. We have a full staff behind us in Lake Mary that will basically support Nancy and my efforts. Um, so you're, you have plenty of support right here in your own backyard. As I indicated, we've been up here several times. If we need to come up here several more times, we're happy to jump in the car and come 15 minutes up to Deltona and sit in the room and work out whatever issues, problems, challenges, or opportunities that we have. And with that, I'm gonna introduce Dave Muir. Dave Muir is our senior um, solutions engineer, and we're gonna let him give, take you through a very quick demo. We do ask that you hold any questions that you may have until the end. We do have a section uh, at the back where you can ask any questions that David has not covered. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to David, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Thanks, Dan, I appreciate the intro. Um, I'm actually trying to share my screen, but I'm getting a host disabled participant screen sharing, so I don't know if uh, we can get an assist on that. see my screen okay? Oh, yeah. Excellent, okay. So thanks again, Dave. appreciate the introduction. Um, and uh, like Dan said, I'm gonna be taking you folks through uh, the online platform and really what we're trying to boil this down and you've heard it once, you've heard it twice. We're trying to um, really enhance and improve the customer engagement and experience. So today we're gonna be looking at the online electronic bill pay and presentment module that your constituents will be able to leverage and make payments um, and, and paying their utility bills seamless and simple. So seamless in the ways of integration where we can match the look and the feel of your government website, which is kind of what you're seeing here. Uh, we have our Hill Valley uh, Utilities homepage. So we would embed this somewhere either in uh, your current online environment, or as Dan mentioned, we are also a full CMS uh, content management services provider. So again, we'll, that's, that's a discussion for a later date. Uh, and then simple in that, uh, our easy use application, uh, we're gonna be ensuring that all individuals will be able to pay their utility bills with minimum effort and maximum efficiency. All right, so I'm gonna take you folks through uh, two workflows here. Uh, so this online site here is for Hill Valley and we're gonna be paying their utilities. So 
Uh, right off the bat, just a little bit about the um, system you're seeing here. It is a fully responsive site, so as I you know, shrink my, my screen here into different sizes, it's gonna respond uh, you know, based off of the different um, device you're on. So if you're using a phone, if you're using your tablet, um, that, that's gonna just automatically and dynamically shrink to whatever device you're fitting. Uh, so now that we're on the page, we need to find our bill. So I'm the constituent, I'm coming in, and, uh, and, and this is the first workflow, is I'm, I'm a guest. I don't have a user account, I don't feel the need to create one, but in this case, I just wanna come in, I have my statement in front of me, and that says, hey, I wanna pay this bill. So I'm gonna come to the site here, and first off, I'm gonna inquire on my utility bill number. So we can search by the bill number, the property address, uh, or by the name on account. So there's a couple different ways we can identify who the individual is that is going to be making their payment. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna search for my utility bill number here. And when I do that, I'm doing an inquiry, and we're querying either the utility billing system directly or uh, that's getting, that information is getting provided to us on a daily basis. Uh, so now that I'm on my search results screen here, there's a couple of different things I can do. Uh, I can choose to make a one-time payment, so that would just be quickly, you know, I can add that to the cart, I can choose to pay it by check or by credit card or any other different uh, tender options that you folks support. Uh, in the middle box here, you'll notice this kind of jumps out at you. This is the, the uh, balance that you owe for your bill, so uh, it tells you a little information about when the bill is updated and how much you owe, so there's no... Uh, you know, questioning exactly how much the total balance is, it's right in front of your face. And then on the right side here, we have some account information. So that's the account number we searched on, who it belongs to, and some other demographic data below. Whether or not the customer current is, uh, status is current or if they are in, uh, it, you know, if they're in defaults, basically turn their water, heating, or electricity off. Um, so that would be displayed here. Uh, in the bottom left, we have the history. So if you wanted to go ahead and check your uh, historical payments against this bill, we would list those there. And then uh, create a new user account, log into your account. We'll talk about that. That's gonna be the second workflow uh, that we'll take a look at. So in this case, I just wanna pay my bill, but hey, while I'm here, I also you know maybe wanna check, uh, check what that looks like. So I'm gonna select this view bill button here. And this is what we mean by when we say electronic bill payment and present it. We are able to display the actual customers physical bill that would get mailed out. This is a representation of it. Um, we would match the look and the feel of what is currently being mailed out to your constituents or maybe look to improve in other areas and we can send this out. Um, I also have another sample here. We also have the ability to provide um, different charts. So this is actually one of the um, other customers that we are currently using here. Um, they actually have, they show consumption usage. So we'll be able to break it down by usage over time, uh, either by electricity, water. Uh, so you'll see that there's all kinds of uh, different information that we can show as part of this bill uh, payment and presentment opportunity. Um, so if we go back to the bill here for our Hill Valley folk, uh, we have uh, a makeup of the bill that makes up the total of the $76 broken out by individual line. Um, and then we can you know, just display any other information that would go along with this bill. All right, so we'll go back here. And now that I've determined that yes, I've looked over my bill, uh, that looks good and I'm ready to make this payment, I can choose to either pay by check or by credit card. Uh, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna say pay by check. And from there, I have a list. Um, we're gonna show you exactly how much you owe for that's in your shopping cart, kind of like you know you would engage in an Amazon shopping cart experience. Uh, we provide any service fee that was attached to that for a total uh, of $86. So then we can come down here and then we fill out our information uh, that would be tied to our checking account. So I'll enter in the account number. I can double check to make sure that the number is in fact correct, and we can confirm that the account number is correct because we don't want people making uh, any mistakes when they're hand keying this in. Uh, we're doing a real-time lookup against the routing number to make sure that that's going to a valid bank, and you can choose to tie, uh, tie that to a check number, but because there's uh, no physical check, it doesn't really matter that you have to enter that in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of this out with uh, some assistance with Google here. And uh, any start out field here, you see that is a required field. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure all the information is entered in. And then below that, we'll see a confirmation message and uh, just agreeing that you intend to pay the full amount of your bill. Uh, we're selecting the checkbox to confirm that. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna complete the transaction. 
So all the confirmation messaging and all that front screen um, and those boxes, that's all configurable. That's all done, uh, you know, we work with you to determine exactly what you want your constituents to see when they come, um, you know, to make their utility bill payments. Uh, so we give you the flexibility to go ahead and change that text at any time. Maybe you're running a, a special, maybe you're saying, hey, you know, we're, we're gonna, our actual cashiering locations are open late and we wanna make sure we give that message out to the customer. Uh, you can change whatever messaging you'd like. And then once the payment goes through, you'll see that there is a uh, items you paid for. You'll see the payment information, including a tracking number see. Uh, the bank it was associated with, and then some demographic information, and then confirmation and what happens next. These boxes, again, are configurable. You can change them to whatever you'd like um, it displayed to your constituents. All right, so that's kind of the guest experience. That's the, you know, I'm a customer. I don't really want to make my own user account. I just want to pay it one time, and maybe I'm moving next month, and then that's it. Now, the second workflow I'm gonna take you through is the user account experience. And this is gonna provide a lot more options and opportunity for uh, your constituents who buy into this process. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an account. And as I already have an account, I'll just log in with my existing one. But it's super easy to create an account. And what you're trying to do is tie all of your utility bills into one user account so that way if i'm a landlord that's managing multiple properties i don't have to keep keying everything in i key everything in once i tie it to my account and that's it i can see all my information right there so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to log into the system and when i do that i'm authenticated into my account and i can see that i would have a list of all my different accounts that are associated with my user here in this case i have one uh, so I have one for 10,000. Um, I would see exactly how much uh, is owed for that, uh, that bill. And then any other accounts that we want to associate would be listed here. Uh, some other great uh, opportunities that you can, and functionality you can do is we have the opportunity to have a card on file or a checking account on file so that your customers don't have to keep keying that in over and over and making it you know, a pretty repetitive process. You key that or you tie that uh, information into your user one time. And uh, when you go to your checkout, we'll see that process. Uh, but we're going to be able to select that from a drop down, saving a lot of time. Uh, we also talked about e billing. So, e billing is if you want to receive your uh, statement or your bill electronically. Uh, that saves, you know. I know it's probably a mandate to send out uh, utility bills via mail monthly, but if you wanted to have your customers opt in and also receive that via uh, email, uh, we can also do that, send that, that statement out that you saw uh, to their email on a monthly basis. Uh, we also have the ability to do auto pay. So if you want to have recurring payments monthly, you know, instead of having for me to log into the system every month, just, you know, like it's your car payment or your mortgage, you know, it's, it's just coming out at a certain day, a certain time, and then it's kind of a set it and forget it process. And then we email confirmation once that's been drawn. We also send out notifications ahead of time too, letting your constituents know, hey, we're going to be auto deducting your utility bill, you know, two days in advance, three days in advance, whenever you want to set that reminder. Um, so if we look down here, we can also see we have more recent payments. So that's across the board, you know, we have utility bills, but then you could have some other things that are tied to this online experience, like your animal licensing department or, uh, you know, your property taxes. But, you know, in this case, we're just focused on utility for the moment. <clears throat> Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to make a payment against this uh, particular account. And in this case, you know, when we come in here, we can see a little more information now that we're in our user account, but it largely looks the same. Uh, we can also choose to disassociate this account from the user account. So it's a click, you know, simple one click process to tie this bill to your user account. Um, but in this case, we want to just go ahead and we're going to pay by credit card. <clears throat> so I'll go in, select pay by credit card. And now that I'm logged in, you'll see that I have an account name and I can select my store payment method. So in this case, I have a Visa card on file that when I select that, that's going to go ahead and we're not going to show any of the card information. We're storing a, a, you know, a secure token associated with this. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to key in the last three of the card just you know, to double check. We'll check off that I'm, a not, I'm not a robot, even though if a robot was going to pay off my utility bill, I'd be pretty thrilled about that. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my email address looks good. I can change that to be a different email address, maybe for a one-time process. And then I'll go ahead and I'll fill out my daytime telephone again. 
All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna select the confirm, and I'm gonna complete the transaction with my stored credit card. And we went out, we authorized the card, we made sure that that card had the funds available on it, and we returned that yes, it was charged and processed successfully. Um, so again, you see a confirmation message that looks very similar to what we saw with the checking, um, but in this case, we have a lot more opportunity for uh, the customer to pay with various methods, um, not just with uh, you know a one-time check or a one-time credit card, it's all stored and saved right there in the system for you. <clears throat> all right, so that's really largely the demo that I wanted to show. Um, Dan, was there any that you think that you know we might want to cover as part of this process? Just trying to be cognizant of the time we have here. Yeah, can you go to the, the bill or the admin console real quick? We got we got about three minutes, three to five minutes. Sure. Let me see here. So while I'm doing that. Um, the manager tool is really what your uh, back office staff will be leveraging. Um, this is a really great way for um, you know your your people that are working in your back office to assist those who maybe need a little bit more help. Um, and you know they could call in, they could create an account on behalf of that particular person, assign them a one-time password, and then you know when they go back to log in the system, they can create their own password. Because uh, we do have some people that need assistance with that. Um, you know this is really kind of the, the behind the scenes process. So we can check out our e-billing, we can check out our users, run reports. So if you're interested in, in tracking your uh, collections over time, we can show that. Um, you know, if we, we want to take a look at our auto pays, um, you know, trying to think, Dan, what, what in particular we want to showcase and highlight in here. Um, it's it's kind of, it's, it's more, this is more, again, behind the scenes stuff that, that your admin folks would be using to um, really pull the information they need, but. Uh, go, to, go to content real quick, just real quick on content. You want to go to content? Yeah, and just, okay. show them, just show them real quick something they can change themselves without involving AMS core, anybody like that? Yeah, sure. So um, that is going to be actually under, um, let me see here, I think that's under e billing. Uh, then we can go ahead in here and we can hit this modify button. So when we do that, you'll see that we have our utility bill search and payment transaction that we just discussed. So I can come in here, I can edit that transaction. And when I do that, I can go in and we have a, some really nice forms here that um, you know make it really easy to configure different items, not just your utility bills. So um, you know, if you wanted to come in here and change certain descriptions, uh, I'm trying to see maybe form fields here. There you go. Uh, yeah, what would be the best to show? <clears throat> Yeah, so if we take a look at, at e-billing, for instance, so maybe there's a point in time where you wanted to only take ACH or credit card for whatever reason, but you know you could just e easily come in here and you can change the uh, different tender types that you're allowing to collect. Um, you can scroll down here and you can see what your, your different matching and search abilities on. So if you wanted to add zip code as a searchable field or your invoice number or your address, again, this is all, this is all really admin stuff that your public, you know, the public facing wouldn't see. This is more for behind the scenes folks that would uh, um, be curious about improving their, uh, your general public's flows. Um, and the point here we're trying to make, and it's kind of hard to see even for me, is that all of this can be done without professional services. If you have someone that is, you know, web, web master, web content, we can train them and then they can go in and make these changes literally at will. Um, mm -hmm. without any intervention or any support from AMS Core. Thank you, David. Yeah, yeah sorry, sure, sorry, so real that, quick, so I did just go into the trans. What was that, sorry? I said, sorry, through that curve there, but I think- Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, just, just real quick too, so we talked about reporting. You know, we have this uh, transaction reporting, so if you wanted to go back in, do an easy refund, check the details of the transaction, or, you know, email or reprint a receipt for a customer, that's all stored right through, right through here in the, uh, in the reporting section. So a lot of features, a lot of functionality behind it. It's just a matter of, you know, what do you want to do? And this is how you go about doing it. We, we could spend two and a half hours going through the back end just so long. So. Easily, easily. <laughs>
So with that, right, so. David, thank you, thank you. Thank um, are there any questions that you can, that you'd like to pose before we get out of your way for the evening? Yes. Definitely, there's some uh, on the board. I just have one quick question. Um, we have uh, several, two, two condos, um, each has about 250, 300 units down on Edgewater and Lakeshore. And their big issue is that they, for every unit, they get an individual bill mailed to them every month. And this, from what I'm seeing here, you would be able to consolidate because the, the condo pays the water bill, right? The, the office pays the water bill. So this, what they're getting now is two, 300 separate bills that they have to just consolidate because we don't separate them and, and they're, everyone is individually mailed out. So this would cover that just from what I'm seeing. You, they would be able to just go ahead and consolidate all those bills under and, one of your and most likely turn off paper and go to e-building so that they can yes. see it oh, all that's, the same. Yes, portal. that's and what they do. With so that, you would save the money on the postage and yep. all of that, and they would get one check out if they wanted to pay all of those, and their credit or ACH would handle it. Absolutely no problem. And, and the last question that I have is, um, I know that our system now requires, if you want to have an automatic dra bank draft withdrawal or anything, you have to print out the form, physically go to the water department. All this can be done online from what I can see here. Bank drafting, That's correct, yeah. the answer is yes, but just to be clear, bank drafting um, is different than online ACH, but yes, right. they could set up their utility, say I want an ACH or an e-check as we commonly call it, okay. and they don't have to fill out any forms at all. Okay, thank you. Okay, and we have Vice Mayor Bradford, and then a couple of commissioners. So, Vice Mayor. Okay, so a couple questions. One, Mr. Peters, you might have to help me with this. So, we are switching over our readers on our meters, and I guess there was an app that we had talked about when we were first doing that. We were talking about switching those all over. Um, what I hate to have is two apps for individuals. So I know that app was saying, hey, you can log it at any time and see their usage. Are any, are, are these two compatible to work together so there's one login? So like you're saying, they can pull up and see the account. So what would be awesome is they can pull up and they see the account and they can also see current usage once we switch over our meters to the new readers. Yeah, the the eGov platform does support. There's kind of two ways to do that, but the eGov platform does support single sign-on. Um, it is a development effort because everyone is different. Um, it has been supported for years under the eGov platform. The other thing that can be done, and we're actually contemplating this with another. Um, uh, uh, Tyler customer is actually taking the consumption files and, and, and serving them up where you saw those consumptions um, and some people that's that's adequate enough for and then other people like the app. So there's different ways that we can do that and we have not got to that level of detail yet on this project on how you would like to do that. But yes, both are supported. Okay, I, I just wanted to double check to see that they are compatible to working together or our residents going to need an app for checking their usage and in chat and in an app to pay the bills, and so I'm guessing this is also app. You know, we keep talking on the computer. There is no, but this, there is no app here. This is all what's called mobile responsive. So most people that are going to pay on a mobile, like a phone or a tablet, will probably go to texting, where they just hit OK or Yes instead of you know logging onto a website. But if they were on their phone, just like David shrunk the, that down, that's exactly the experience that you would get on a phone. But there is no actual app. Okay, so there is no app. It would literally like go that way. So kind of similar to AT&T system. Similar, yes. Right, okay. Um, Mr. Peters, also, I don't know how much it is to mail each one of the bills. Um, obviously, just to get 60% of the individuals, we're looking at 142000 close to $143,000 in savings to the city. Would it benefit if we allowed a small percentage, I don't know, one, two, three percent, whatever it is, um, that if they, they convert to going through the email and going paperless to encourage more individuals, could we offer a paperless discount? Um, there's, there's a couple ways of doing this. Let me, let me first go back to the, the genesis of all this. Uh, two years ago this month, I came to the commission when I was uh, public works director outlining a cost savings initiative within Deltona Water. And this is part of that initiative including changing over the meter system and all that. One of the really exciting elements of the program is that when you set up an account, it can be across many different departments in the city. For instance, in your case, 
if you had a site, they were going through a site plan review process and you have a fee and you have a building permit at another site in the city and you have water bills for multiple locations and they're all under your name, with this particular software package, eventually we would be able to go to where you put your name and your user uh, password and all that. All those accounts would come up and you can pick and choose which ones you want to pay with which credit card or what have you. Uh, so you know, this is a, a one-stop bill paying system ultimately. This is not just water department. This is a, this is a county or a city government wide. Correct. Thank you. God, that's awesome. That's awesome. If Good. I, um, if I may, but the, uh, to get to your, but to get to your question, this is the age-old problem that we have in customer service, whether it's City of Delta or any other organization. Is part of this is people will use their credit cards, and there's a charge for that. There's a percentage. That is offset by the fact that we would have cost savings in terms of customer service personnel that we may not need if we can get enough people to switch over. So it's one of the balancing acts, uh, but you know, we have looked at internally, we have looked at things such as charging people 2% to use their credit card because you know, it's costing us money for, to do that. But on the flip side, then we're just creating more work for customer service. We need more customer service reps. So what we had decided is it really is it is a zero sum game uh, in terms of whether it's better to pay by credit card or call customer service and all that. Um, you know, we can we can go chasing a tail, but in the end result. Whatever way they end up paying, there is a cost involved. There's really no fair way to recruit that money, so we're not going to try to do that. Okay. Can, can I just interrupt very quickly? Um, Commissioner McCool, is she able to be in on part of this conversation? Um, technical staff, is she still zoomed in? Does she have audio? Yeah, I, I'm good, Madam Mayor. Um, just, I think it might be a proximity to Mike thing. Um, I'm just having a hard time picking up some of the conversation, not from the presenter, but from commission and city manager. So I just, I apologize, but it's making me mental right now. Yeah, I just want to make sure she's able to to see and and be part of the conversation. So, can you, can, Commissioner? Can you hear? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Thank you. It's just the in and out with the not the presenters, but with the mics up on the dais um, and city manager. So I don't know if it's a proximity to mic thing, okay. but thank you. Yeah, and whenever I would like to virtually raise my hand, also, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay, we have Commissioner Vila Vasquez on the board, and then we'll go to you, Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Mayor. So I have a few questions. I'm sort of confused because um, in one presentation, it talks about payments via credit cards. And on the video presentation, it talks about uh, bank accounts, right? Like linking to bank accounts or checks. So my question is, can you set up an order payment through a bank account? Yes. You can. Absolutely. So the person can log on to their account and just click on payment and payment date and just pick their bank or bank account that they added to that account and just send out the payment. Yeah, what they would actually do is set up a e-check. We call it e-check, but it's a bank mm -hmm. account as, as one of their stored methods. So let's just say they had a credit card and two and a, another credit card and a, a bank account. Right. And that stored pull down that David was de demonstrating, that would open up and they would just, I want this one for this one. The next payment could be another one. And once when they click that, all of that information is securely, you know, populated and ready to send that ACH transaction out on their behalf, whether it's a one-time payment or whether it's part of the auto pay setup. Because you can do the same thing with auto pay. You can say, I want to pay auto pay on the day that the bill is due, and I want to pay it with a checking account, not with a credit card. It supports both. No okay, problem. so currently, um, if I go in and make a payment online for my water bill, I can select the day of my payment. 
Um, so the, the day that I pick is the day that they uh, debit my account. How many days do you um, give a customer to um, schedule their payment before you deduct it from their account. In other words, you have banks that if your payment is due on the 15, they give you five days, so you have to set up your payment, a payment on the 10th in order for it to get paid on the 15th. Okay, so I understand your question. Basically, in setting up the profile, you will determine the, the city utility department how many days you wanna give them as advance notice. Um, let's just say three, which is typical. Um, and so they'll know that their due date is, let's pick 110, you know, uh, January 10th or the 10th of every month. So they know that it takes that long for it to get in. We process all transactions in two business days. So it's, it's two ACH business days. Card. Yes, So you give us two business days. Correct. So if I wanted to make a payment today and my, my bill is due today, and I make a payment today, it's still gonna be late. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't, that, that's gonna be your policy decision. It would not be late because it would in, this, in the system as approved and you would know that you have good funds coming to you, okay? Um, and generally that would be treated as a paid account. Um, the exception to that could be, and this is, again is part on you, is that ACH is not guaranteed funds, and so you could actually have a NSF two days later, and then you would deal with that just like you would deal with a bad check that somebody may put at your counter or they put in the mail. But we do all of our processing and settle all of our transactions out daily. So if you actually settled your credit card batch by 5.30 Eastern Standard Time, we will put your credit card money in your bank the next business day, okay? Which is typically cities are gone by 5.30 and you're in the Eastern Time Zone. So we'll have your money in the bank the next business day. ACH is ACH. Mm -hmm. It's a two day cycle to move it through the banks and it's not guaranteed funds. So Steve, so if, I'm going back to you with the same question. So because the ACH is two days you know, um, processing, and I make a payment, my bill is due today, and I make a payment today, right now, on the current system, my bill is paid today. If it's before, uh, I forget what the closing time is, right? So if I make a payment through their software today, my bill is due today, mm -hmm. am I going to be my bill gonna be paying today or is it gonna be late because it's gonna be a, take a two day ACH processing okay. time. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, as soon as it's registered, it's paid, it's considered right. paid. Yes, ma'am, it's- So we're going by this Daltona system, not their system. Yeah. Right. Right? So as soon as the payment is processed, my, payment, my bill is paid. Yes. Regardless of what happens in the background. Correct, right. Okay, thank you. So another question. Is there a fee when you pay by check? We have elected to absorb that fee. And it's uh, gonna continue like that? For the foreseeable future, yes. Okay, and there is no payment, no fees charged to the client, and maybe you answer this question, but- No convenience fee or anything If they pay like online. That. No, ma'am. Okay. Um, maybe I missed it, but if I don't have my account number, can I search for my account through my name? Yes. You can, okay. Um, another question I have is, how secure is my information on your system? Well, as I indicated on our slide, we are PCI uh, level one certified, which is the highest level that you can get as a payment processor. It's kind of like the, the, the minimum that you can do, but it's also the maximum. And so nothing we store is in uh, encrypted databases, 99% of what's stored are in what we would call in the business tokens. So they're kind of a representation of the credit card number, but you, if you could hack in and you did get into the database, that token is useless to you as a, as a fraudster or a hacker. So we employ all of the security requirements at the highest level necessary. Where do you store that information? Um, they're actually stored in um, the tokens. So there's no card data Locally, stored Locally, at your, or at, you at our data site? Center, at our data center. Nothing stored in the city of Deltona, utilities, the um, uh, um, Munis system, CSS system, there's no card data at all in anything that resides at it's stored at your business? Correct. In Lake Mary? No, no, we, we run in AWS. Uh, Where? It's commonly called Amazon Web Services. Where so is that? Uh, spread all over the world. Okay. It's, it's the way that all major processors and big companies um, 
I'm sorry, you know, I'm asking these questions because... No, they're valid questions, you know, absolutely valid. I just want to make sure that we're going into something that's, that is, um, it's new. So not new. I want to make sure that it's all the... new for you, and I know, new. And I know that eventually we're probably going to hit some kind of um, problem here and there, right? After we install the system because it's not 100% proof until we start using it. Well, it, this product has been in use for over 25 years in hundreds of these kind of similar installations nationwide. Um, so this is not a new product in any way, shape, or form, just to be clear. Okay, well, it's new for us. I, that I agree. That I, and there will be some hiccups and some bumps. Okay, um, and my last question. So this is your software. Can our programmers modify it to be user-friendly if there is something that we get a resident call in and say, this is a little difficult for me to use, you know, I can't um, use this application, I, I'm getting lost, which happens? Sure. Um, so, the, so the answer to your question is it can be, but you can't do it as the city of Deltona. You would pay for, for, you would come to us and say, we have this enhancement that we're looking for. We would go over and scope the number of hours it would take to make it, come back and build it, change it, come back to you and say, okay, this is the scope of work. Do you want to do it or not? If you say yes, then we go do the work. So the, the reporting and everything that Dave showed you, you can customize and make your reports and everything look and provide those to your customers or internal all day of the week. But if it's an inherent feature that particularly touches card data or ACH data, then we're, we have to make those changes. Okay. Now, many times those are good ideas that we say, ah, that's a really good idea and we'll put in our next enhancement, okay, because this product is constantly taking that kind of input and it may cost you nothing if you're ready to wait. But if it's something you've got to have right away, then it's what we call a professional services engagement. It's very common in the business. Tyler Technologies does it the same way. One more, one more last one. So on the administrative side, we can pull reports. Absolutely. Are your reports, can we pull reports by user IDs? Absolutely. So we'll know who input the information if we have to research something. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner McCool. <laughs> Hey there, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Steve, how many employees will this replace? We're not anticipating replacing anybody for the foreseeable future. Okay. We are, um, we are looking at severely reducing the call wait times, though. Okay. And, and, and will that be due to the um, to CORE's IVR offering also? Yes. And so could somebody speak to that also, please, about uh, CORE's IVR offering? Sure. So basically we run what we call in the business a hosted IVR solution and what that just means it runs up in that AWS cloud, it's not on your premise or anything like that. And we utilize what's called, we utilize what's called the Munis uh, IVR API, which stands for Application Program Interface. And so when a customer calls in and puts in their account number, we do a real-time lookup into the Munis database and we pull back what we would call the account data, payment date, last payment date, due amount, things like that. Okay, um, then the script goes and plays through a defined script which you basically author with us. We give you some samples and you can tweak it and modify it any way that you want. Um, and then we publish it. And so they'll go through that particular script and, and when they'll say I wanna do a credit card, or I wanna do an ACH. Um, when that approval happens, we give them back a confirmation and we do a web service call back into Munis CSS talking about immediate payment, payment of recognition. And we tell that account we have a pending payment for this amount, it's, you know, it's good money. Um, and that's basically, so, then it so just the hangs IVR up the phone. Does, part of the IVR platform is callback? Callback call to the features? Uh, we we do clients. have, if you're talking about outbound, we do support outbound, um, but yes. that so far has not been contemplated it so far. We haven't got into that level of detail, but it does support that, yes. Okay, well, I'm just giving you a heads up on that level of detail because it's one of the things people, um, when we talk about reducing that number, uh, that is what we're talking about, is, re is 
reducing the amount of time if somebody is very frustrating for them to be waiting through their whole lunch hour right on that so I'm just putting that out there um, while we're talking about this um, we've talked about the payment formats that it will um, that you will process um, and also um, I need to ask this of Steve as well will this will we be rid of finally other third-party payments um, because we have predatory payment systems um, that are not good for our residents and some of them don't know how not good it is for them you know which ones I'm talking about we brought this up in meetings before so are we going to do away with all other 3p payment systems um, I don't know but it's on the roadmap. I need to understand that you want me, you want me to address that? yeah if you don't mind I'm so let me let me make sure I understand the question. Um, are you asking about what we commonly call in the business uh, pay stations or where people would go in yes. and make a payment? Okay. So yeah. curr currently we don't have integrations into the AMSCOTs of the world, but there Good. are there are solutions. Yeah, uh, I agree with you there. Uh, there are solutions that we are are actually evaluating as we speak, um, where um, a group of a very large network uh, dollar uh, dollar stores. Um, I, I wish I had the list in front of me, I apologize. But a, a huge uh, network of retail stores have got involved and now are becoming pay stations. So we have one simple integration into their core, and then, sorry about that, and then basically we can interact, and this is all cash payments. This is 100% cash payments is what it's geared for, and it's gonna allow somebody who may just wanna walk into a dollar store because they're in there, allow them to make a cash payment, and there will be a convenience fee associated with that because that's how that service makes their money. We still process the credit cards at the same rate schedules that we have. We're probably at least nine months away from having that, um, and that's just an educated guess. I'm not on the development roadmap, but it is brought up in many of our meetings. Um, it's just one of those so projects we want to get to. For staff, my point in saying that is that I've been in the water department before working on an issue. Somebody's been in an AMSCOT, okay, had the receipt presented to staff saying that my bill was paid today at AMSCOT and they were still threatened to be paid off because the water department still hadn't received their money, okay, from AMSCOT. If a third party is going to take to task to pay these, I'm saying it needs to be shown as paid today, so that's why I'm asking us as staff and as a city, are we going to do away or are we going to entertain doing away with other third-party payment systems as they're predatory and some people don't know that they're predatory. And so I just want us to think about that, being this is a workshop. So, um, you know, that's all I want to say about that. Next thing is, uh, is Tyler Technologies, are they still on behalf of Munis? Are they processing? What what other payments would they be processing, Steve, um, as far as, or are we going to go to just the system? I just don't want us to be so spread out it's confusing to the residents. Are we going to get rid of, of, you know, that? We can go in and pay our bills, but trying to filter down and funnel payments, right? We've involved the other uh, departments in the city, uh, planning and zoning, um, uh, even the center. Uh, they all are very interested in, in this um, endeavor. Uh, however, they want us to be the guinea pig, so. <laughs> say you say guinea pig I say you know leader um, anyways um, next question uh, document retrieval solutions is that something that core is is venturing into at all is that one of your things document retrieval. I'm sorry could you just repeat it you, you kind of broke up a little oh sorry okay. document retrieval systems solutions um, I'm speaking of public records request. That's where I'm going with that. No, no document retrieval solutions. Not at this time. No. But we typically okay. would interact. Right. We'd interact with those document systems, and we would do the integration and do the card processing and update the accounting system. But we are not currently in the business of serving up those kind of documents. Sure. Okay. Um, what time? Uh, how much time from implement to go live? Didn't you say about four months? Yeah. Uh, 90 to 120 days. Okay. 
Um, and also, I just want to, if you can be like 30 second elevator speech, but, um, but it, the commissioner of Vila Vasquez alluded to this, but for DDoS attacks, right, text and process, could you just give me what you have or currently use right now? I, to be very blunt, I'd have to get somebody from IT to get into that level of detail. We're utilizing okay. all of the all of the required um, uh, defenses that the DODS and all of that that are required for being PCI level one. I don't know the actual underlying applications that they use, but I can get you that information if you'd like it. Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor, that is all I have. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Vice Mayor. All right, so just a couple questions that a few other commissioners brought up. So we talked about NSFEs. Are the NSFEs, I'm guessing, are still determined by our bank? And how are they charged and processed to the individuals? Are they going on the next bill or are they gonna be charged then? And do we have a normal, like, some cities will say, hey, if you have two NSFs, you're no longer to utilize the system. So I just wanna make sure, you know, obviously if it's gonna be costing us to get these NSF, I wanna make sure we have the policies and protocols in place. Um, I'll let you answer that one first. You guys do Altamont currently? You guys, the ones dealing with Altamont? Okay. So currently with our NSFs, um, we charge the customers a fee. So if we receive a, a, a failed uh, payment from our bank, then we'll in turn charge the customer that fee. Right then when you process the payment? Once we receive the return payment from the bank. Okay, so I'm guessing there's gonna be a disclaimer on the website that says if the fee is processed and it's non-sufficient funds, they'll be charged a $35 fee we, when it's processed. Yeah, we okay. can have that, we that verbiage. How many attempts will you make and then at what point do we say this account is frozen from you know taking any more payments? Does that ever happen? Uh, currently what we have is if we receive uh, three or more NSF sheet fees in a uh, calendar year, the customers usually put on a cash only status to avoid those payments from constantly happening. But they do receive the return, or they do, they do receive the fees applied to their accounts once we receive them from the bank. Okay, so our current policy is just being drug out, brought over to yes. the, the new system. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I understand what Commissioner McCool is talking about with AMSCOT dollar stores and, and those third party payments. What I'm fearful of is you would be amazed at the number of individuals who still do not have a bank account and they do rely on AMSCOT and dollar stores and, and these other agencies in order to you know, pay their utilities because it is convenient. So what I would hate to do is cut those individuals off because they don't have a bank account, but I would like to see as soon as you have the integration available that we get these tied together because like I said there's there's a lot of people right now who who don't have that bank account so I would kind of be hesitant to stop that form of receiving payments until we get them you know set up through you guys um, the document retrieval fees I understand what she was asking I don't think she was meaning will you guys be able to retrieve the documents that they have, but will they be able to pay document retrieval fees since it is a city fee, like you were saying, Mr. Peters, if you have an account, you can log on to that account and you can say, hey, I put a records request in, it's $100 and I wanna pay those fees. Uh, the answer to your question is yes. Uh, okay. We support two types of what we'll call web payment forms. One is what's considered validated. That means we have the data behind the form. And the other one, as you might expect, is non-validated. So the validated is the better because we, we can go against that account and at least verify it before we let the payment go through. Sometimes that's not practical based on the number of transactions per day, per week, per month, per year. Um, and you'll start with a non-validated form, which can cause a problem here and there if someone fat fingers account number or something, but until you get to critical mass, you wouldn't want to go out and build a validated, pull an integration in from some other system if you're going to take five payments a month. So we always look at that from a, a, a velocity or a frequency um, before we go validated, but it's a, we support both already. So Mr. Peters, if there's an event in Parks and Rec and an individual or you know somebody wants to say rent it, can, is park, Parks and Rec, and I'm just throwing this out there just trying to understand, are they able to say, yeah, you're 
your fee is $25, I'm gonna you know, put it on here and then that individual is able to maybe fill the application out and then go online and pay without having to come down to City Hall. I mean, because I think, I, I mean, I definitely see the need. I just want to see that it's gonna benefit a lot of other departments and that's a huge savings of time for many departments if you know they can eliminate a lot of foot traffic coming in and out. Um, Madam Vice Mayor, as I said earlier, our goal is to make the, you know, this a uh, one-stop payment method. Um, the company also does um, a lot of web work, web page work for municipalities. Uh, one of the things that we've been talking about in Parks and Rec would be uh, you can pull up a web page for Dewey O. Boster, right. and you and your husband want to uh, rent a field to throw the frisbee around for an hour. You would be able to go in and click what hours you want to use, which field, um, and then at the bottom it will bring up uh, this software and you can pay your rent right there while you, you're uh, setting up the rental. Uh, you know, if, if uh, Mr. Rama is wanting to rent the, uh, the gym at West Crow, uh for an hour and a half, um, he would be able to go on the page, click the three half hour segments, the bill shows up at the bottom, he would pay through this, up, uh, this method. So what we're trying to do is integrate a lot of things into place, uh, whether it be the web page, whether it be the bill paying process, whether it be the rental process, um, whether it be building plans, submittals, all those things into a more customer friendly method. This is the first step in that whole process. Um, you know, the new meters, we wanted to make sure that we had a system where the new meters that we bring in using what's called a NAS system of towers, NAS, uh, could be integrated in through Tyler into the payment method to where you know, hopefully when it's all said and done, when you were looking at that chart, you could be able to pick your meter and it will show you your daily usage. Um, and you can even do a real-time check on your meter, and if it's red instead of green, red means it hasn't stopped running, so you probably have a leak. Um, and then you know, there's opportunity for notification to go out. Uh, so all of this is an effort to create a more customer-friendly environment, whether it's our web page, whether it's billings, uh, whether it's renting facilities, or what have you. That is the goal, and this is the first step in that goal. Great, and, and I just want to say thank you for bringing this forward, Mr. Peters and staff. You know, this is, I, I was looking at it as a water, situation, but you know, this is a city-wide, I mean, I, the savings that I see here and the customer experience, you know, I think all of our number one goal up here is to make it easier for the residents to, to utilize and work with the city. And, you know, this is, this is a huge, this isn't just a savings on, you know, going to pay your water bill. So, you know, I give you guys kudos for doing a mass Citywide resolution here. Great job. So, Comm Commissioner Ramos, Madam Sosa, Mayor. and then Avila Vasquez. Oh. Did you have something? Madam Mayor, and also I have my hand up. Okay, Commissioner Ramos, and then we'll go to you, Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. But just real quickly, in reference to what Vice Mayor was just talking about, then, uh, Peter, so then the departments necessary that would need to have access to this will have access to this. So, Park and Rec will be able to have access to. Now, when they have access, do they only have access to their Parks and Rec, or do they have access to the whole system? Yes, I've been talking to um, Director Reckley. Um, I have specifically uh, channeled him to um, places such as Orlando, um, Cary, North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina. They all have online reservation systems for reserving fields and the like. So you know, he had been tasked with not only coming up with that process, but a fee schedule, which we are planning to come back to the commission on the 27th, 22nd, I'm sorry, with the workshop, to start talking about field uses agreement, field rentals, and that type of thing, making our facility more available to our residents in a customer-friendly way. Um, and also, you know, part of my directive to uh, 
uh, Director Reckley, and ultimately the recreation side of the equation. I want it to be like the building department, like Deltona Water, you know, functioning almost as if it's an enterprise account. It pays for itself. Um, there is no reason that citizens who don't use the recreation facilities should be subsidizing you know, small groups of people who you know, lock down certain fields and that type of thing. We need to open it up to where it, everybody has an opportunity. You know, West Crow Gymnasium could be used for somebody's birthday dance, um, and they should be able to rent it for that purpose, or, you know, use the center or whatever it is. Even the center, if we can set up a system online where they can rent the rooms online and then fill up, you know, we have a list of things that we provide and they can check off, you know, yes, I need, you know, so many tables with you know, skirts on it and what have you uh, for that event. So we're trying to create a customer-friendly environment for the city of Delta. Okay. Um, Commissioner Sosa, did you have a, did you want to speak? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just had a couple quick questions. All right, so this, we can set up for online payments you know, e-check or credit card, correct? Um, now, on, on, on the fee schedule here, for this call center, is that a, a fee that's charged to the city to call you guys for tech support or something? What is that call center fee? Call center fee? Yeah. Um, hmm, I mean, <laughs> do we have that in there? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, it, it, it's on the page oh, with the okay, breakdown. That's, that's not ours. Oh, that's not that's yours. That's your call center, I believe. Okay. Let me double check that. It's, it's under the average monthly cost, AMS and then Elevon. Yeah, so that's just the, the, the payment cost for the call center. For customers calling in through, oh, yeah, the credit card processing. It's just the the overall monthly charge for that, the, the average monthly cost of what we're paying now, and then uh, with L1 and what we'll be paying going to, to AMS. Okay, I'm confused. Is that for mm -hmm. residents calling our call center, or is that, you know, our, would that be our employees calling for tech support? That's residents calling our call center. Okay, and you're, you're looking at seeing a reduction in that with going to this software? Yes, sir. Okay. And why why the reduction? Is the the amount of the the cost itself, the fees, uh, the fees associated with Elevon compared to the fees associated with AMS? Okay. So I'm kind of confused. So what what is the difference on the service? I mean, if they're calling our customer support, where would it be a difference if we used AMS or Elevon? So basically, the um, the, the merchant services cost that Elevon is charging you is significantly higher than what AMS would charge you for that same volume. So we did a very detailed analysis, and this is just a summary roll-up, where I think we showed somewhere around $7,000 a month roughly in savings, um, and I may not be dead on on that, but basically we just were willing to process the transactions less expensively than what Elevon has. Okay. So the, the human factor, the money movement, all of that is pretty neutral. It's just the fees that the city would incur to take that same dollar volume and process it through Elevon versus AMS Corp. Okay, so, so basically the total of the $359,000 a year, it, that's more just for a gateway as a payment processor in the city? Is that more just like a gateway access? That's for everything. Yeah, that's for yeah, that's, everything. That's okay. everything yeah. So that's their, that's their uh, analysis of the total acceptance cost that the city pays, sorry, annually, annually, that the city pays annually for moving those dollars that they processed historically through the, through the system. Then they did this, took the same numbers and did what our cost structures were, and that's the, the obviously under the AMS. Okay, so when somebody pays by credit card, you've already calculated in this figure uh, what the per transaction fee yes, is, and you've already calculated what the percentage is? Yes, sir. Per transaction? Yes. That's all calculated into this cost? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, how about with point of sales? Like say I go into the office and I pay by check at the office. 
does the clerk at the office down at Deltona Water, do they use the same system to process, or how would that work? So the, the and you threw me a curve when you said check, but let me answer credit card and then we'll go back to check, okay? Okay. So what we're, what we're providing through our integration that we have, AMS has directly with Tyler cashiering and Munis payment processing is we'll be deploying EMV and NFC compliant chip terminals, things you see in every retail store. Okay, so when the constituent walks up, the teller's gonna bring up their bill, they're gonna say, okay, you owe us this amount of money, and then the cl clerk is going to say, you know, put your card in, and that's gonna work just like it does at any retail store, nothing fancy. So th you will just have a little point of sale Ex exactly. device. Now, there. as far as check processing, that's gonna be driven by the Tyler technology solution that you're running. Mm -hmm. So you may have check 21 readers there that you're processing, you may have paper that you're mailing out the back door. We're not involved in the face-to-face -face check processing because you're not using today our cashiering solution. Okay, if you ever decide, ooh, we like what they have to offer better than Tyler cashiering, um, then we have a full function um, image scanner, uh, DocuSign type thing that creates a Check 21 file similar to how you're doing it right now, and that's all done at the point of sale. But it's not our point of sale, it's Tyler's point of sale. And they have, the, they have the same similar things going through them. Similar. Have, have we looked into that to make it all under one umbrella instead of having two separate entities? Well, we're, we're, the, we're the, we will be the processor of all of those transactions except the paper checks that you're taking to the bank. Right, but that's, that's what I'm asking. You know, if we, to, to, to my staff over here, yeah. do, have we looked into just doing like an e-check when people come in and instead of going to the bank, just do an e-check right there, you know, on a point of sale? Have we looked into that? I don't, I don't recall it coming in. It, we looked into it and the cost came out a little bit more, or came out more expensive than what we currently practice now. So we decided to roll out or present what we have currently available. And if the process changes in the future, then we can kind of look at it at a later date and see okay. if it works for us. So it is something you looked at, just yes. wasn't cost effective. Exactly. Either. Okay. And then now on, on the online platform, um, th this fee here for the 359000 is that for X amount of transactions per month, or you know, should we say, yeah, okay, for the first 50,000 transactions, it's gonna cost this? Is there an, an additional per transaction fee if we go over X amount, or is it an unlimited amount of transactions? No, there, it, there, there is a bundle of transactions. I believe the first threshold is 20,000 transactions a month, and based on your existing history, even if we doubled it, um, which would be great if we did, but not typical, um, you would still be underneath your monthly threshold. Okay. So you have, you have some room. But okay. if you were to go to 25,000 transactions every single month, then yes, there would be an incremental cost on that. Okay. And, and it's a graduated scale down, so the more volume you do, the less you pay per volume, per okay. transaction. Because if we're looking at integrating other departments and that, that threshold should be going up. I don't expect it to go up super hard, you know, with a lot of field rentals, but, you know, it's still, there is the opportunity there. Um, and like for our staff, have we um, looked into how we're gonna notify people about going to the e-billing? Is it just gonna be in a paper or email or e via email or is it gonna be in a paper format mailed to them? Uh, we're, we plan on doing a full blitz. Every, uh, every available opportunity for advertising this, uh, whether it's bill inserts on our website, uh, we'll be making announcements everywhere because we want every, every person who's interested in e-billing and, and paying uh, online to do the, we really want to cut down on our postage and printing. It, it's, it saves us huge. And just one last uh, question. Um, if somebody does go online and they pay their bill and all of a sudden they found out their spouse had just stopped by the water department and paid it, is there an option to go in and cancel that payment by a certain time each night in order for it to not to go through? Two answers to your question. Depending on the interface, we would actually already know that that other payment had been made, particularly if they called the IVR. We go and do a real-time lookup. 
So if they've been in the lobby and they made a $50 payment, when I go make that web service call, I'm gonna say your payment's smaller than X by $50. So that's, that stops a lot of it. But the second part of your question is yes, in that you can go in into the, into the portal and basically what we call in business void a transaction. Now you'd have to void it in your cash, in your accounting solution, and then you would of course void it with us. Okay. So yes. And the end user at home can do that, correct? The end user cannot void their transactions once they're committed. You okay, would, so it, there's, there's got to no be administrative control. That. Yeah, for all the checks and balances. Okay, like, because I know, like, if I make my car payment and I decide, you know what, I'm a week early, I don't feel like paying it today, I can cancel it and reschedule it down the road. That's not a not viable supported. option. Not supported. All right. Okay, thank you. Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I just really wanted to to reiterate and drive back home. Um, I understand what Vice Mayor was talking about. You get people don't have bank accounts. Da 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 da. I get that. But here's the thing: you're going to drive to either the water department, or you're going to drive to the Ann Scott. You're going to drive to the place that's not predatory. Or are you going to drive to the place that is? Period. And I'm not calling Am Scott. I'm saying any other business like that with the crazy user fees that they're using. And I brought this up multiple times before, even before I was a commissioner with my whole thing with the water department, right? It is our jobs to protect our residents, bringing them along, striving to do better. And I'm not trying to dictate how people pay their bills. I've lived in abject conditions where I've lived paycheck to paycheck or day to day on a server's payroll. I understand that. But taking that option away as another level of us protecting our residents against people that they might not, that, yeah, it's a convenience fee, but at what cost? And I think that people, when that option isn't given, they will adjust. People are resilient, right? You don't have to have a checking account to go to the water department to pay. I know for a fact that you can pay in cash at the water department. I have priors. So I get that and I understand that, but it is just with the most, um, you know, the most forceful voice that I can use on this is, is doing away with that predatory um, third party retail, whatever service charge, right, that there is. Because convenience not always really convenient in the long run. It's just really not. So I would like for us to think about that as we move along. And I'm open to any input, but. I just, I'm putting that out there for the people that cannot protect themselves and feel like they have no other option. I believe that once people understand, oh, I'm gonna have to be at the water department or I'm going to have to do this, we're setting a healthy standard as to how we move our city forward. That's what we've been talking about doing. So I think it's incumbent that we remember this. We're not trying to take options away or, you know, like take away freedom of payment choices. We're just providing healthier options. So. But that's, I just really still want to drive that home. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question for um, Steve. So how do you plan to in, implement this conversion? Is it gonna be full blast or are you gonna take piece, like a certain number of clients and then you know go with other number of clients, or is it just gonna be all at one shot? Because if you are, I'm hoping you have a lot of people prepare for those phone calls. Well, the, um, the next step is to bring it forward to the city commission uh, for, for your final approval. Uh, but the, ro the rollout is, um, like Daniel said, is, is about a three to four month process. There's a lot of, of um, uh, beta testing and, and a lot of development that we'll need to go through. And in that process, as we're nailing down the, um, all of the particulars, we're going to see, okay, well, this, this makes sense to start now. And then we'll bring this, this part in over here later as, as appropriate. 
So, but I, I think you how can do you, probably how do you speak do to the, that much more. How do you do testing of new software? You do it in what's called a user acceptance uh, test environment. So you can bring up you know, the, your live code and kind of fool it by sending it to um, a web server that has defined responses. Um, so if you send it a dollar, it's gonna approve. If you send a dollar oh four, it's gonna decline, but it's not going anywhere, it's all internal. Right, Very so you're gonna, it's probably gonna be done over the weekend? Um, the conversion? The testing. No, the testing can be done through Any the time? middle of the day because it's not testing any production servers. Right. So production is what you run t at your city. UAT, or commonly called test, are run generally in parallel. Some cities have very robust test systems. Some cities do not, okay? And I think yeah. you do. We have a test in the training environment. Yeah, so they have a test in the training environment. So what we okay. will do is we'll go cast test, get it all worked out, work the kinks out, whatever those are. Most of it is just formatting and look and feel, to be honest with you. Data is data. Um, the other so thing I will test suggest input and output. Exactly. Okay. The other thing I will suggest to you, and, and we haven't got far enough into the, the scope of this yet, but typically when we're bringing over a municipality, we typically will run the two systems in parallel. Right. Okay, because I can get to the data in Munis and Munis can get to their own data in Munis. So there's no real hard, not a need necessarily for a hard cut. Now, if people have permissions and they have accounts and they're storing card data, then there's some additional work we need to talk through. Some, and this might be something for you all to think about in the, in the staff, some cities go with what we call a, 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 a new re-enrollment. So no matter what you had before, you gotta go re-enroll. The other path to that is, no, we'll bring over your existing profiles and your cards, which is more involved and, and more timely. So those are things we'll make decisions out as we go through our project meetings and our kickoff calls. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong way, it's just the way that works best for the right. municipality. And sometimes you gotta take in the demographics, you know, the demographics of who you're serving. Um, and so if you're in a college town, eh, no big deal. Flip them, nobody cares. They do this all the day long. You do it with a little bit older demographics, then you need to be a little bit more hand-holding is my point. Make sense? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, couple questions. Steve, do we store data on the cards now when you pay online? Don't we do not. No. No, man. no, I didn't. I didn't think so. So you would not have that issue at all because the only thing that we do online is the bank draft, where it's taken right off out of your bank account. That's what's stored, right? The automatic monthly payment. That's the only thing that's stored data. The ACH data. Yeah. Yes. Everything else is not. You have to continually re-enter everything. I mean, you can go on the website and you can just, you know, your your account number will come up, but you continually have to re-enter any payment information. Yes. So am I correct in that? That's, that's my experience. Yes. So that would not even be an issue because we don't even store card data. That's great. The only thing that we store is your account number and I believe your, your name and your, your address and so forth that comes with your, with your account number. Um, the question I have, so um, on, on your, the, for the PCI compliance, the city uses Tyler CSS to provide a payment portal for utility payments. Do we use Tyler for all payments in the city or what else do we use? Are we using Tyler CSS for all, all payments in the city? In other words, permitting for the center, for parks, for uh, anybody that wants to pay a fee or a fine or a pet tag or something else, what, what are, do we use, what, what do we use for software? If I understand your question correctly, um, has been indicated this is the first step in the process. We want to, you know, this is something we've been looking at for some time in Delta and Water. Um, we have had some discussion with the, uh, the vendor about the possibility of adding other components in the city, uh, inclusive of the web page. Um, so those will be part of the continuing dialogue. What we were hoping for tonight is to present you this information. I think it's very exciting information get consensus from the commission that you want us to move forward with it. We will come back to you in a regular meeting with a contract to implement this as part of the Delta Underwater billing process. And then 
we will also, from that point, start looking at the other departments being added to it and other opportunities we have utilizing this, um, this company uh, to help us get where we hope to be in, in the near future. While I had the microphone, I want to personally thank the entire Deltona Water staff that's here tonight. Uh, you should be very proud of this group. They have uh, put in a lot of hours, um, not only researching, but putting out proposals, interviewing firms, uh, and selecting who they believe to be the best firm, and I, I agree with them. Uh, with their selection, and uh, as I said, we're looking for consensus so that we can bring this back to you as a regular agenda item um, and start the process. Thank you, sir. Um, first, I will ask the commission for consensus for bringing this forward. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Ramos? Vice Mayor? Commissioner Leo Vasquez? Commissioner Sosa? And Commissioner McCool? Sure. Okay, um, you have your consensus, and what I would like, uh, again, the, qu the question Mr. Peters was, what other billing company do we use throughout the city, or is it Tyler for everything? Tyler Technologies. We use uh, Tyler, T Tyler Cashier and Intergov. They're basically all Tyler products, Munis. Intergov is Tyler, right? Yes, ma'am. So uh, when you bring this forward, I know you're only going to do Deltona water to begin with, but since you have this linkage capability for everything else, I would strongly suggest that you bring a presentation or at least some data forth that we can see what what other departments and, and, and portals we're using. I know obviously it's park and rec, the center, the clerks or the cashier's office, the clerk's office, who's using what and how will that mesh and how can we move forward? Because honestly, this is like out of the ballpark compared to what we have. Because we are so antiquated no offense to anybody out here, it's just a process. We are so antiquated with our internal technology in terms of taking payments and billing and, and even for, for permitting for, other, for coming from another city as a, as a business person having to come here and for an inspection and, and so on and so forth. There was a time you had, you had to come back up to City Hall and pay before you could go back out there. You couldn't do anything online. So however we can make this simpler, easier, and better for our residents and our staff and transparency. We can have this all under one thing. It would be wonderful. So you have your consensus. Um, are there any public comments, Bridget? No. Madam Mayor, we have one public comment. Albert Bryan, please. Okay, Mr. Bryan, would you like to come forth? Imagine that. <laughs> Because somebody said that they take care of our quote unquote web page. Did you just insult that company by saying that? That's the worst web page I've ever been on. I mean, wow. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that if I was you. I really wouldn't. Now, let me see here. One thing that really bothers me is uh they said they're going to bring it for you for a vote. And then maybe 90 to 120 days after that, they'll have it up and running. So I'm going to assume that it takes this company 90 to 20 days to educate our staff and put the stuff in place. Now, let's see here. We got that part out. Now, uh, we have close to 30,000 people on, or 30,000 homes, I should say, on our order system now. I'm going to assume that the 20000 that he was talking about is ePay only. Now, let's see here. 20% of that would be, you know, roughly too many senior citizens to have to educate in this system. Hmm. I wonder how long it takes to educate a 90-year-old person on this system to actually e-do it. Okay. Now, that's over. Um, let's see here. What is it? Oh, the timetable. I kept hearing timetables with this. What is the actual timetable that the city wants to implement this? And 
how quickly will you get that out to the citizens to say, hey, this is going to be a new system that you're going to have to learn. Unlike when we upgraded our web page during the pandemic and everybody had to scramble to figure out how to use the damn thing. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Madam Mayor, this ends public comment. That closes public comment for this item for this evening. Um, city Manager, any comments? No, ma'am. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mayor? Thank you very much Mayor? for your presentation. It was very detailed, very good. I appreciate it. Yes. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. I know this is not a normal thing, but if, if you uh, allow me to make an announcement, um, it's for. You guys are killing me with all it's, this stuff it's a that's quick not allowed. No. I did it for Commissioner Sosa last time. Now, here we go again. Please, I'll let. This is at the end. There is no more. This is a workshop. There's no more comments. If you would like to do that, speak to the city manager, and then the city manager it can— It will be uh, too late because it's for the veterans event from Deltona High School. I'm just saying, but that's okay. We are adjourned.